Asheville is not the only area dealing with water outages right now. Ruptured pipes and highlands forces leaders to take urgent action. News 13's Rex Hodge reports on the damage from our severe weather and how, for a time, it threatened the mountain town's water supply. It was the combination of sub-zero temperatures and then thawing that caused a lot of the problems. The pipes couldn't handle it, including the sprinkler system here at the Peggy Crosby Center, which houses nonprofits, causing a mess here. Highlands Mayor Patrick Taylor says the sprinkler system pipes burst Christmas Eve, flooding the first floor. Carpet and ceiling tiles, um, electronics still have to be replaced. Not far down the road, it was a similar scene at another nonprofit, the Literacy and Learning Center, the executive director recording the flooding. Crews now busy mitigating the damage so repairs can be made. Businesses weren't spared either. The Highlands Wine Shop had water pouring behind its tasting machine from a broken upstairs pipe. Luckily, the owner had put a, a conduit in place, so there was just minimal damage. Even an exterior water valve at Highlands New Performing Arts Center wasn't spared. It froze over and it blew out, so we've had to shut the water off to the building. There was more damage, Mayor Taylor says, with bursting pipes at 100 unoccupied homes. Highlands is a popular place for seasonal residents, many leaving their homes empty for the winter. There was so much water loss, the mayor says, it made it difficult to maintain levels in the town's tanks to run water systems. He sent out an urgent message Tuesday to residents in town to walk around empty neighbors' homes and report any leaks to the town so crews could shut the water off. We knew we had to do something quick. We could not sustain those water levels if we didn't get the water um, cut off to these houses. The water tanks are going back up now. The experience, Mayor Taylor says, caught a lot of people off guard. Years since temperatures dipped to minus seven. He says years ago, seasonal residents would drain pipes before leaving. He says living patterns have changed. But he says with this experience, those part-time residents may revert back to the old ways, especially when they witness damages to their homes. They're going to find a mess. Our plumbers will be very busy in the coming weeks. Yeah. Taylor says the town is committed to ongoing improvements to its water distribution system. And the mayor says planning for the future is likely to include replacing old piping, some of it plastic, with ductile iron piping. But first, we want to look into the impact of this water crisis on hotels and homes. Some people without water don't have anywhere to go at this time. News 13's Madison Smith spoke with one woman about her struggle right now. Not just because she isn't. It's nothing new. In fact, it's something many of you have been dealing with for days. You go to turn on your water and nothing comes out. And that has South Asheville resident Brenda frustrated, not just because she isn't able to perform simple tasks like washing her hair, cooking, or even flushing the toilet, but because this all started without warning. She says she woke up Monday morning, like many of you, to low water pressure. That evening, our friend called and said, do you have water? Do you have water? And I said, yeah, I think we have water. And um, she said, I don't have any water at all. And I said, we'll call the Biltmore police and see if there's a problem. She called me back and said the police said they're shutting it down all over. And just 24 hours later, her household went from low water to no water. What is this water situation right now? I still don't have water, at least as of 30 or 40 minutes ago. Um, my friend, one of my friends called me and said she has a trickle of brown water, um, but that's all. The toilets, their toilets aren't filling up. More than anything, she wants to know how we got here. All of the news for weeks have been reporting this, but I knew, you know, zero degrees is going to affect people's water. And for them not to be aware that that was, this was coming is what's frustrating. And to hear that they'd been working on it since Christmas Eve, why didn't we know that there was a problem so we could be preparing? Now, Brenda tells me she understands this is a much more complex issue than it seems on the outside, but being that she took every precaution seriously with preventative measures, the question remains, how did this still happen and how can we prevent it from happening again? And we'll try to bring you those answers later this evening on News 13. And it may be days before many Asheville water customers will have running water.
City leaders updating the public today on the status of the outage as a boil water advisory has now expanded. News 13's Taylor Thompson is live downtown with more. And Taylor, you've learned exactly why it's taking a while for them to restore water. Yes, yeah, so the Southern Water Treatment Plan is back online as of earlier today, but it's a gradual process and one that can leave a person with water and then without water again until the system is fully restored. If you think about the water treatment plan as being the body of a spider, and as the water leaves the water treatment plant, you can think of the legs. So it's not a linear process. So water's going to go where it goes until the system is refilled. David Melton so. says that they'll be slowly flushing everything out and testing for water quality as they begin to refill the lines. Those closer to the plant will have water first. So we will have customers who have water and some customers that don't have water until the system completely recharges. A boil advisory has been in effect for those in South Asheville, but it has began to reach more of the city. And we have some residents in West Asheville that are under boil water notice as we as we go through this process of balancing the system. Please be um, patient with that process and pay attention to your boil water advisory. You will receive a notice or have already received a notice directly if you are under the boil water advisory. The mayor says people should begin to see their water coming back on by the hour, depending on how close they're located to the facility. The city has been working to provide water to our most vulnerable. Those who are elderly, those who are disabled, those who may not have transportation, those who may have financial hardship. Proactively, we have delivered to 140 of those folks. Those still in need can call 211 starting back at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning to have water delivered. Let's look for further communications as we into the morning. Um, we will hopefully have something out no later than 9 a.m. with an update. And the city says the best way to stay up to date with alerts is to sign up for the AVL alert system. You can do so by heading to our website and clicking on the link. The goal is to have everyone's water restored by no later than Friday.